Wait, you can hear window sounds? I thought they were all muted. Unhide all. You gotta mute everything, I guess. Desktop audio. No mic. No iOS camera. No webcam. Just this lovely AKG mic in the corner. Um, okay. Have I wasted two hours yet? No. <laughs> uh, sometimes I think I'm a lot more funny than you think I am, and that, to me that's okay. Color correction. I just want this to be a bit brighter. Does that make it choppy again? All right, uh, I, I, think, I think we're good to go. Um, let me, hit me with an at comment and, I'll, and I should see it um, if anything gets super weird. Okay. I'm gonna hide more of myself. Final question, can everybody see Maiden? Is, it, is this text too small? Yeah, hello, this looks really tiny to me. Okay. How big do we have to go? Can I hide this side window? Yes. Small. Okay. Cool. Okay. Hi. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna imagine we just push start. Hi. This is Trent. You're welcome to Maths with Trent. Um. Today, we're going to talk about. Uh. Well, we're actually gonna try and build something rather than just talk about something. Um. I'm just bringing up my notes here. We're going to try and build a script that runs on Nons, Nons, which is this lovely little device here, created by one of our one of our uh, viewers today. Hi, Brian. Um, which obviously, I'm sure you already most of you already know. Why else would you be here? Okay, so we're gonna make for Nons a um, a script that you can run on nonce that allows you to update um allows you to send basically upload scripts onto a crow so we have crow up here oh what just happened oh my god Oh, now it thinks it's smart and it's rotating it for me. Why didn't it do that before? So we gotta rotate it clockwise. Cool. Look at that. There you go. Um, so this is just a little case that I have sitting here. It's uh, it's very basic. It's just got a couple. It's got a mangrove, a just friends for some modulation, a filter, three sisters, and then a width, and it just goes to the output there. But we're really not going to worry about the rest of that too much today. It's mostly about um, about writing a script on on this little lovely little device. Ooh, the screen! Look at that. Um, in terms of what we're going to try and do, so my goal is to have on here um, basically use this knob to select a script, um, and then. Or, or one of the knobs, it doesn't really matter. Uh, and then basically just be able to load it onto, onto Crow. And that's kind of the, the initial stage. That's the kind of the, the technical challenge. The reason that this is going to be interesting is that we've been talking about building a kind of parameter system 
um, that allows values to be shared between a crow and the nonce. And having that interconnectivity, the, um, the idea is going to be that on the nonce screen we'll be able to add kind of like a, a set of parameters that you can, that are kind of auto-generated um, out of the crow script. So it becomes like a, a little satellite control system for a crow script that's running by itself. Um, we're not going to get all that way today. Today we're just going to make, we're just going to like have a thing on here that can upload. And I think that will be a nice beginning. Um, so that's the general goal. Um, and I'm just going to write down the list of steps, which I think will be helpful. Sorry. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to try and do is build a really basic UI for, for nonce. Um, so that's just going to be, uh, it's just going to control the screen and it's going to have a line of text, um, maybe a couple lines of text, and then we're going to hook up a knob to be able to scroll through, and then that's probably about the beginning of, of everything I want to try and do. Um, the next thing is we're going to download uh, the Bowery library. So Bowery is like a, a little collection of Crow scripts um, that are kind of like, you can just set them to run instantly and they become like uh, a self-contained uh, little system. Um, and so they're kind of like a primary use case for why this would be interesting, um, is being able to have these like off the shelf um, scripts that you can customize using a, a nonce interface. Eventually it would be cool, it would be cool, I'm not saying it's gonna happen, but it would be cool to have like a, a web interface to be able to do the same thing from a computer rather than having to like edit a text file and upload that. Um, so this is kind of like a, a prototype, if you will, um, for another version. Um, what is next? So that was, Oh, I didn't actually say what we're going to do. So we're going to download the Bowery repo onto Norns. I'm just going to do that once, um, just directly. Um, later, if we get there, we're going to try and have it kind of part of the... It's going to be a, a Git submodule, um, which will basically allow the script to live in the Maiden librarian. Uh, that's what you... That's this button here. Um... So it'll be available as one of these, and when when you update it, it'll um, basically allow you to. It'll automatically bring in all of the new updated Bowery scripts. So all you have to do is update the one file here, and that'll kind of like um, give you the kind of current selection of everything. So that's that's that idea. Um, so it's downloading Bowery uh, from there. We're gonna generate file names, file name list. So that's, that's just a little programming challenge to say, we have this uh, repository of data and now we're gonna scan through a file and pull out the, the names into a list, uh, into a table. Um, next thing is we're gonna display that list on screen. Then we're going to add a a kind of a, a selection, a, a selector. So you'll be able to turn the knob and basically scroll through selection. Select scrolling UI, um, which we might build first and then just hook it up. Um, that might be a nice way to do it. Um, and then we're gonna do loading, loading crow script. I already have that working. I, I'm going to have to find it, though, and that might be a challenge. Um, but we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, oh, we can just try and write it again. Uh, I can bring up the, the Druid uh, source, and we can maybe go from there. Um, and then finally, I think the, the kind of end goal for today is I want to be... I just want to... Once you load the script, I want the screen on Norns to just show you the first line of the script, which is typically a description of the script. So, I think that sounds good. 
That took 20 minutes to get to this point. <laughs> so, um, let's, let's begin. Okay, so some of you might find this a little tedious because I haven't written actually that much. Uh, that, I haven't written that many non-scripts and, and it's been a while. Um, so it might be a little slow going. Um, but hopefully it's not too bad um, because I know the modern docs for, for norms are really good. So you can't see this, but I actually have the, the documentation open immediately next to the Maiden browser. Um, I can, let me know if you want to see that too, but uh, I think it'll, I think, uh, if it doesn't make sense, just, just complain and I'll probably uh, course correct. Okay, so um, whenever I build anything, the first thing I'll do is just look for an example and copy that. <laughs> um, I've written some like simple things in the past, so maybe they're a good place to start. Ooh, ASL scope, that was fun. So many things that I built and like never touched again. Okay, so I'm just gonna copy this and new file, is it? Oh, I can just duplicate file. That's great. Let's do that. Did it not work? There we go. And then rename. So we're going to call this We're going to call this. We're going to call this. We're going to call this Oh, scanned up. Yes, thanks, Brian. Always coming with the gold. Oop, that's the wrong window. I'm gonna steal that over to here. Um, what should we call this thing? Uh, it's basically, why don't we call it Bowery Lua? Because what I'm en envisaging this to be is basically a a Norns version or a Norns container for Bowery. Um, container is a very uh, loaded word these days, but uh. Let's, let's roll with that. Um, I'm gonna hide this. Okay, so now we have a little text editor. And I guess we're just gonna begin. So, um, Valerie. Is this, does everything shake when I type? Oh, it's not too bad, cool. Um, okay, so a script manager loader for crow ooh ui lib if anybody has like a, like if you have a really specific code example i'll just rip it directly um i just i'm, I'm not trying to waste i'm not trying to read documentation for 2 hours um we'll try and we'll just try and like hack something if if it comes to that but if you have a good example i would love to see it so I know there's something weird about um, this button here, right? Because it goes, all right, there's no script loader right now, but it flips between the script and the uh, the system. So why don't we not use that for beginning, even though maybe later we'd want to use it um, because it's more of a like system style thing. Let's just use, I believe these are called encoder, uh, encoder two and key two. So, um, so. Key two is going to be load script and uh, E two is going to be scroll like uh, select script scrolling. These are more notes for myself than anything else. Cool. So we don't need any of these variables. Or this now that we have an init function, which we don't need any of this. <laughs> but I love deleting things. It's very satisfying. Um, okay, so I don't know if they, these need to be up here, but should not. Anti-aliasing, it's turned off anyway. Yeah, we don't need it yet, so let's, let's not worry. And line width, I don't know if we need to call that every frame, but let's just drop it down here instead. Um, cool, so this is looking pretty simple. Um, 
So in terms of starting with the UI, I just want to draw on the screen first. I think that's the kind of the easiest thing to do. So wait, file, who has a link to file select? You're telling me all these great things, but I don't know where they are. File select. I, I mean, okay, so to be fair, I was going to prepare for this, but then I had to set up a Windows machine and that took about four hours. So that's my excuse and I'm sticking to it. I'm sorry. Um, but let's, isn't, isn't there a search function? Yes. If only I could type file select. No? No hits? Um. Okay, so we have a scander. That's just going to get us files. We need to draw it to the screen still. So let's just draw a line of text. How about that for a start? Um, so we're going to say, we're going to clear the screen. So we're going to redraw the whole screen every time. Um, set a line width to one. Who knows if we need that? It's there. Screen level 15 is the maximum. And we're not going to draw a rectangle. So basically, we need to put in here, um, draw the UI. Great. File selecting the main UI nicely. Dan, coming through. Thank you. It's funny to me that you're going to watch me copy and paste for two hours, but let's, let's not get too carried away. All right, here we go. File select. That looks good. <laughs> um, what, what's it being called? File select. Okay, we'll get back to that. We don't need it quite yet. Um, so instead, I'm just going to look at the redraw function. Um, ooh, which is dynamically assigned in, in MLR. That's pretty cool. Everybody's throwing all these incredibly good uh, ideas at me, and I think what I'm just gonna, I, I don't know enough. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna hack it, and then maybe collectively we can make it better. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna make it work as best I can for now. So we want the reference. I wanna look up um, screen, the screen API. Great, okay, so. Wow, these docs are great. The screen text. Let's try it out. That should work, right? I mean, we don't need any of this junk, actually. So, ooh, does Maiden have have vertical select? Probably not. Okay. Definitely don't need that. All that. All that. Great. Hey, hey, hey! We're in business. All right, so now we can print some text. Um, it appears to be left justified, which, because there's no move here. Maybe it's remembering some old state from somewhere. Oh no, it's center justified and it's printing from the center to the right. I believe, yeah, it looks like that. Okay, so we need to move to the left column. Let's put like a two pixel. Um, what's the hotkey for so, control P? Okay, great. Um, so what I'm doing right now is I'm just gonna, ooh, let's make a list of, um, of strings. Do, are we doing local? Is local a thing? Um, I know it's not super necessary, but Let's roll with it. Okay, so let's call them file uh, file names. Um, it's going to be a list, and we'll 
we'll say, hi there. Um, what's your name? Nice to meet you. Brilliant. So, um, we can make this a loop instead of doing, instead of writing them directly. So let's just go straight to that. Um, so for i equals one to the length of file names, do string text file names i. So that's going to be this, but we also need to move, right? So I'm going to put that down in here. I should stop asking questions because I'm like not watching the, <laughs> the chat. I'm sorry. Um, tab print, yeah, ooh, tab print paths, that looks interesting. Text screen left. Cool, all right. Um, move, so we're gonna leave that two pixel indent. I mean, it would be kind of fun to, let's, let's have like a little slant to it just to give it some character. Two plus i times two. So that's gonna, well, the, the image is reversed, so this way. Um, and then it's 10 down. I think these fonts are maybe eight pixels tall. Um, so why don't we say eight times i minus one. Oh no, they need to start actually eight down because it prints from the bottom up. So it's really just eight times i. All right, that's kind of nice. Um, ooh, we could do some fun stuff where we like, oh yeah, wait till the list gets long, you're right. Whatever, it looks cool for now. <laughs> Alright, um, I'm gonna make this three. Or does it not? It doesn't like doing, being that fast? Did I not save it? Let's actually, we don't even need to add an offset. Let's just make it times three. Cool. Okay, so here we have some names. Um, so we want to add like a selection. Um, so in order to do that, um, I think we should draw, so this is gonna be like, um, draw the file list. And I, before I do that, I wanna draw the selection. So, I mean, we could do this. We could also just have it in the middle and scroll. I'm sure one of these macros you're talking about already does this, um, which makes me feel silly, but uh, here we are. So and this is just a placeholder for us. Okay, um, so let's draw a selection, like, a, a, like the lowest brightness possible box. Um, or I guess we could draw an arrow. I don't know. There's got to be some something fun. Is is there italic fonts? There is, right? <laughs> uh, this is hilarious to me. I hope uh, I hope y'all are enjoying this as much as I am. Let's see the screen box. Let's have a look at that. Screen font face. Okay. Am I am I doing this a completely stupid way? You can you can tell me. Like if if we should just look at this UI thing, I'm happy to do it. Um But here we have a list of all these fonts. Um I won't use font number two because it might give Brian a heart attack. That's the last thing we want. So let's go to Ooh, Roberto Thin Italic. I love that. Um Oh, why don't we do this? So, this is, I mean, I'm doing this kind of more for fun than for to make it the most efficient thing that it could be. So what I want to do, this is the, the new idea. We're going to print in the middle of the screen in a different font the name of the selection. 
and then we're going to print the ones before it and the ones after it in the same in this regular pixel font above and below. Um, that's the idea. Let's 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 try it out. Let's add. I want to add two more names here. Um, one and two. Okay, so we can actually do this differently. So let's draw the yeah draw the selection. We're going to do screen move and the X, let's leave it at one. It doesn't really matter, I don't think, to us. Um, and something like, uh, I'm guessing like 40, maybe 36, because I think 32 is halfway. Um, so 38, that'll give us some, some size like above and below. Um, let's do, I say, it's a, wait, screen font is a method call, it looks like. That seems strange to me, but uh, maybe the docs are just weird. So let's say the index, we want to use Roboto uh, Flight at heart, 10. This we're gonna to need to change this back to default. That's gonna be one. I don't you don't think I need the colon. Docs are much too fond of colon. Alright. It's that thing where sometimes being technically correct is like not actually very important. Oh I, I copied it down here. Okay, so this is starting too high. Um, let's comment this stuff out for now. Hmm, we don't have anything yet. So, oh, it's I haven't actually <laughs> told it to draw. So for now, I'm going, I'm going to print the first file name, but we're about to change that to a variable so it can change. Wow, okay, I've got to make it bigger. Font size. Let's say 16. Hi there. All right, I'm gonna, oh, we want, we have to turn on anti-aliasing, right? Yeah, look at that, that's nice. It's gonna be too big though, I think. Like it won't fit on the screen. And that's a little tough. What, what happens if we go to 11? Ooh. I kind of like that. I don't know about you. Andrew Lent Vim, I'm very proud of you. It's really hilarious to be using Maiden right now with arrow keys. Um, what? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Oh, for the question about what IDE this is, this is Maiden. This is actually running, this is Norn's kind of native IDE text editor environment. Um, it's pretty It's pretty simple, but it has a couple of nice little things like this, uh, this terminal down the bottom, so you can ask it fun things. Um, <laughs> sometimes I'm, try I'm too smart for my good. Its name is okay, apparently. Okay, uh, what are we doing? This is, I'm being silly here. We have, wait, why did it disappear? What did I do? Whatever. Um, okay, so the first thing we're going we're going to select uh, a number. So rather than calling file names one, let's call um, selected file. Are we doing underscores? Is that the style that everybody uses? I think. Yeah, yeah it looks like it. Uh, cool. So. Up here, next to file names, we're gonna make an, this is an, another local number. Uh, 
yeah, selected file. And let's make it equal to one on boot. Um, so we'll run that again, and nothing changes, but that's because we were already printing the first one. But we could change this number, and that'll load a different um, script by default. So that's all well and good. Um, now we need to we need to select that. So the way we're going to do it is by using an encoder. Uh, those are pretty simple. We just we just have this function, um, and we said we're going to use encoder number two. So we'll say if n and n is which encoder equals two, then z is like increment decrement. So we'll say file or selected file. That's what we called it. Um, there's a utility for this, right? So let's say tab dot util. Wait, what's the what's the the fancy thing? Tab dot util. Util dot tab. Ah, oh, oh no, I'm struggling here. There's um there's a utility to, to print out. Brian already commented about this earlier. Tab dot print. That's what it is. Oh, fight! Hi, nice to see you. Tab print. Uh, we want to print the util table. Okay, now let's have a look at this printout. So this is what it told us. This is basically all the stuff in uh in the the util table. Uh, and the thing that I care about is um, not clamp, but the other one. I want to basically make it wrap around. But it doesn't seem to have that. It must be somewhere else. But, um... Does clamp work like I think it works? Util. What if I limit it like this? Great. Okay, so util clamp is just gonna uh, give us a bottom and a top. Um, somebody has already told me this. Uh, tab print util. Thanks, Dan. We got that. Okay, we're gonna need an end. Um, so what we want to do is selected file is going to equal util.clamp selected file plus z. So this should give us um, Oh, I haven't given it any limits. Great, oh, that's classic. One, and the length of the uh, file names table. All right, are we going? Still nothing. Require UI? What's the giant hand stroking transform? That's a very strange thing to ask. Oh, <laughs> I understand. Yes, yes. Hello, hello. If n equals to encoder, this looks correct to me. Selected file is because this is. Let's just make this global. Is there anything, any interesting information here that is telling me something that I should realize? All right, well, I'm gonna get back into, my, my normal mode is, is writing embedded code, so all you ever get to do is do this. Oh, I'm not redrawing the screen, that's why. Great, okay, perfect. 
So, um, we have our incrementing counter. All we have to do after we've made it, we, after we've chosen a new number, is we just have to redraw the screen. So here, look at this. We get to scroll through. We have a new name. Nice to meet you. Um, and that's great. I, I'm, I know you can like change how sensitive the knobs and stuff are, but that's something that'll come later. We just want to get it working and like looking funky and weird. So I think this is a good start. It's already 47 past. Ha. Why don't... All I really need now... We could, we could draw the whole list, but I feel like that's something that we need to use all this stuff everybody in the comments is talking about. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this is good enough. You know, It allows us to choose a file name and... All we need now is to have like a load command. Um, so in order to do that, I'm just going to use the the button. This one, um, that like so key number two. Um, and all we're going to do is when we press the button down, we're going to load whatever script is currently highlighted. So in order to do that, we have this line here. Thankfully, from our last script, we're going to select on. Uh, encoder uh, key number two and z equals one means whenever we push it down it'll happen um, so we will need to redraw but what we really need to do is ooh even better um, let's just say every time we select number two it works um, and then we're going to do a split on whether it's down or up so if z equals 1, then something else, something else. And in both cases, we're going to redraw. Um, and all I really want to do is I want to save the state, because I want to basically draw uh, something on the screen to kind of indicate that it's actually loading. Um, we can make that we can make that more interesting later, um, but let's just have we'll make a variable called loading, set it equal to z. Actually, we don't even need to do that case there. Uh, we need to have outside loading. So what? Yeah. Okay. So loading equals zero. Um, I'm gonna copy and paste this up with our UI stuff up here, like the file loading stuff. Um, And then we're going to basically draw something different depending on that. Um, and the other thing we need to do is make it happen. <laughs> um, so we're going to, I mean, we could probably combine these two things into one, but we're just going to say load pro script. It's a function. We don't have, it doesn't mean anything yet, but we're going to call that function. Um, so I'm just going to copy this. And we're going to... I never know what the... If there's like idioms for like whether you put stuff above or below these callbacks. But let's define it down the bottom. So load script is going to be a function. Inside of here, we're going to say um, to do load the crow script. So let's run that. So now we have to select our, our, na our name and then we push the button and then up in the, up in the terminal we see to do load the crow script. That's great. It's working. So it obviously doesn't do the thing yet, but we have a, we have a UI that is at least it works. It does something. Um, the last thing we want to do is just make a, an indication on screen so you don't need to see that terminal to make sure that we know that we've actually pressed the button. So there's no, uh, there's no doubt. So that's going to be a simple if loading. Um, and really all we want to do... Do we want to draw a background? Yeah, if it's a background, basically, if you want to draw, 
things behind other stuff. You just grow up first. At least that's how I think about things. Um, so if loading equals one, let's draw a box. I'm just looking over at the docs again here to find um, the screen documentation, which we were looking at. Okay, so let's draw a rectangle, which looks like Screen dot rect. Um, we'll start at zero. Where are we drawing? Thirty-eight. So probably like thirty. We'll have to tune this a little bit. Um, thirty down, and we're going to draw all the way to the other side of the screen. So one twenty-eight, and let's start with forty, and we'll tune these values once we see how incorrect we are. Um, Okay, so that's going to draw us a rectangle. I think we need to tell it to fill as well. Mm, da, da, da. Fill, fill current path. I'm not even sure. Let's actually just do this. Uh, we need to tell it the brightness. So level, I want to set it to level one. So that'll be the lowest possible level. And then um, we're going to make the, that draw on top. Okay, that hasn't done anything, um, so I'm guessing screen fill, and it's just a function like that. Nothing yet. Um, screen fill 255. Ooh. No, screen fill, the documentation says fill current path, uses currently selected color. What about screen stroke? Would that do it? All right, so clearly I'm doing something wrong here, but um, no args. Oh, it's because, ha, I'm not pushing the button. Sometimes I feel really dumb. Oh, all right, we have something. It's not quite right. Um, let's turn the brightness up a little bit so we can see it better. Okay, is, what's the, the order of arguments for this, um, for this rect? Screen rect, draw a rectangle. Oh, okay, so I have this wrong. The first pair is the X and Y. So that's where we start the point from. And then the next two are the, uh, the size of the box. So 128 is correct because we want to draw the whole width, but 40 is way too big. We just want like 10. So how does that look? It's actually kind of cool. It's not right, but uh, sometimes this stuff looks better when it's like a little bit off. I like that looks good. What about 14? Let's do it differently. I, it doesn't look so nice having the whole thing lit up behind. Oh, whoa, we can do this. Okay, check this out. We're gonna do, we're gonna draw that, but then we're gonna draw a second one, which is a little brighter. Ooh, we could make it a gradient. <laughs> Sometimes, for me, programming a lot of the time is just like, I'm sure I'm trying to get a job done, but at the same time, like, why not have it be like in, have it be joyful? So in that spirit, we're going to draw it as 15, uh, or 12, maybe even less, um, little skinny boxes that get brighter and brighter. Um, so let's, let's do that. Uh, four I equals... Oh, and this is nice because I think, do we need a, the only thing we're really 
increment it. No, it'll increment the bright brightness too. Okay, so let's do for I1 to, let's say, 8. Um, do screen level, and we're going to print I as our level, so that means it's going to get brighter each time. Then we're going to draw our rectangle, which is going to start at 0 all the time. Um, and we were setting it to 27, which is kind of the top left corner. Um, so we'll leave that for the first one, but we need to add um, the I number. And we actually might need to add it times two, but let's get to that in a second. We'll just draw something to start with. Then we're gonna draw the full width by one pixel. Um, then screen fill, and that'll be it. I'll leave this here for reference. Wow, that's nice. I, I don't know if it's showing up on the camera super well. Can we get a better view? Whoa. How's that? All right. Yeah, great, okay. Um, so obviously it's not quite big enough. So why don't we make each rectangle do two, pic two pixels deep rather than one. So for this, we're gonna say i times two, and over here, we're going to say a size of two. All right, so that's a little bit too much and it starts too high. So I'm gonna bring it back and let's just only go to seven here. Okay, two steps higher. That's one too many. All right, to me, it's goofy, but it's something. Um, so let's just, let's stick with that. Okay, I think I'm satisfied with saying that that's, that's good. That's like enough. Um, we can, we can do animation later, but uh, I'm sure that would take way longer than we have on this stream. It's already five o'clock and we've done one out of the six elements. So <laughs> let's move on. Cool, but we have a UI. I'm, I'm feeling good about that so far. Um, the next thing we need to do is let's, I'm gonna show everybody where this script is. Um, right, that's never gonna work, cool. This is the Git repository we're talking about putting onto, onto Norns itself. Um, You'll see here, it's really just a, a bunch of Lua files. Each of these is a script, and you can kind of run those as you go. Um, whenever I've used norns in the past, I've always just SSH'd into it. So that means just basically having like a terminal connection. I've never really used the maiden. I've used it like a couple times. Um, so my question is, how do I get this repository onto Norns? Any ideas? Because usually I would just like use the, the terminal, the terminal, and say, you know, git clone monom slash Bowery. Should we just? I mean, I can just copy some scripts in, but that feels like it's kind of not doing the whole thing. I would just SSH. Okay, so the question now is, how do you do that from a Windows machine? <laughs> um, it's a tough question. I mean, it's not a tough question. You just use PowerShell, but like, does that even, how does that even work? I can just get my, I can get another laptop. How about that? <laughs> does this even have SSH? It does. Okay. That's cool. Maybe we can do it. Um, I should share this, share this window. I mean, I feel like we shouldn't even need software though. We should just be able to, isn't SSH like a pretty standard thing? Window capture. Let's make PowerShell. Maybe I'm just a glutton for punishment. Um, 
and see what happens. All right, so now we have a PowerShell. Now this font is really tiny. It doesn't even get bigger. You can't even make the font bigger? That's ridiculous. Oh my god, what happened here? Um, there must be... Is there not settings for this program? Well, anyway, does it, can we even do it? We have to say ssh-l, and you do like the, you have to go to system, Wi-Fi, dash, so the username is we, okay, that did not work. Um, oh, there we go, dash j. We have to give it an address though, right? Log file, config file. And then user dash J. Do I does that mean I put it in? Oh no, I say we at. Okay, cool. Get in there. Um, so it's going to be dash j, we at this. Uh, nope. This is a small task. I'm going to grab a different computer and I'll just point the camera at it and we'll get this done because it's a small one. How many different operating systems can we use in one stream? <laughs> to me, a funny question. Item. Oh, I don't know if if uh if Helavi. I I never actually know how to say Fight's username, but um, if he's around, still, check this out. I was writing some cop before. Oh my God. Uh, I'll be right back. Well, I didn't even realize Norns was also sitting in a puddle of water.
I don't know if any of you have ever watched uh, Louis Rossman, I think is his name. He's this, like, Mac repair guy. And in one of the videos, he like he's a Mac repair guy, but he just talks shit about Mac the whole time, about Apple computers. Um, oh, wow, no, that's really wet. Uh, he, in one of his videos, he pours a whole glass of water, pretty much just like that, into a ThinkPad. And it, like, keeps working somehow. And, like, stays working for literal months, and then eventually it stops working, he sends it back, and they just replace shit for, like, for no cost. It's pretty ridiculous. I, I have a feeling that that's going to be the end of the actual, uh, of the making the thing part of today. So if that's what you're here for, maybe, uh... You can log off, but if you just want to hang out and watch me clean up my studio now that it's covered in half a liter of water, then by all means, I'll be here. <laughs> Thankfully, that was like a seven-year-old computer, so... Don't worry, I'm not too freaked out. It's like, that's the Netflix computer. <laughs> oh my god. Ooh, if my trackball is messed up, I'm gonna be so pissed. <laughs> it's like way more important to me than anything else. Oh, sorry, I'm touching the microphone. Yo, this is really funny, because I was just saying how I was writing some COP, which is a programming, it's like a Lisp programming language that compiles to C. Um, but it's a, it's COP, it's a fish. It just, it just needed to be in the water. No? Is that not hilarious to anybody? To me, that's priceless. And the great news is I was recording the whole thing.
from you. Oh god. It instantly turned off him for some reason. Oh, so we'll work it with the later minions? Yeah, I, I still have it turned on. Okay. <laughs> I mean, this is like the all can do that, so... He's... And that's it. He's already a piece of shit. Because he drank coffee. Mm. Yeah, that's, ac that's actually probably true. <laughs> like, I was, like, really excited. I was like, oh, I'll just do this computer real quick. And then I was like, oh, look at what I was doing on the computer. <laughs> and, like, not the time it was. Like, oh, God. I don't know. I have a feeling that I can fix it. Um, I feel like, I feel like I have enough knowledge that I'll be able to, like, open it up and figure it out. I feel like that might be a fun project, even. It could be fun. I, I would give it a day. Oh, I'm absolutely going to let it, like, dry. I shouldn't even take the bath off right now. Yeah. Maybe I'll do that. Great. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> right? Ugh. <laughs> so stupid. I thought this computer was old enough that it was before they started doing that, but apparently not. This thing's from like 2013. They never fixed that. They never, there was no start. There was well, no. I just remember my previous laptop was 2008, and it just had Phillips head. Mm. It's a tale as old as time, right? Indeed. I am in America. <laughs> I want my keyboard wet too. I hope it's okay. I think those things are built for. Anyway, I'm gonna jump back in here. See what happens. <laughs> okay. Well, I don't know if you heard that, but uh. The, e even in, uh, I think it's 2012, that laptop's from, maybe 2013. Even then, they were already using the five-sided screws, so you not so you would have to buy literal screwdrivers to be able to open the machine. I just wanted to dry it out, but uh, can't even do that. Um... What should we do? What, sh what, what is there to be done when such things happen? <laughs> oh, Alright, well, this computer didn't die. Let's <laughs> try to wash my windows. Oh my god, you guys are hilarious. <laughs> I like that, like, when something bad happens, everybody just can, like, carry on in the chat room. That's, that's satisfying. It's like a whole, it's a little society. I like that. <laughs> oh, boy. Ta -da. 
No one, this is still running. It got very wet, but it's um, it's still on. I mean, if it breaks, I, I went make Brian fix it, but I, I'll, I'll do my best to see what I can do. Um. It's interesting, uh, somebody said that they, they had to run their, la their Mac under water for ages. It, as soon as the water hit it, it turned off instantly. There was no spark or anything though, so I feel like maybe there's actually a temperature, a moisture sensor. Um, You know, Andrew, I hate to say, but on that computer, the shell is fish. Uh, so, there you go. You were right. You've been right. You're so, you, why aren't you a comedian? Maybe you aren't. I don't know. Now you're curious about Carl, but you don't want to jinx me. <laughs> Carl's cool. I've enjoyed writing it. It's been, it's cool because you can, it's like, it lets you write lists, but, uh, and use all the high, the higher order functions and stuff, first class functions. Um, uh, on an embedded platform without like destroying the RAM, so it's pretty cool. Stream the laptop drying. I could do that, and then Twitch would probably give me, like, the next level of, a. Uh, there's, there's words for it, you know? Like, if you, if you stream enough and often enough on different days, like, they give you, they give you a title, but it, like, doesn't mean anything. They just do it to try and get people to spend more time streaming. That would be funny. That would be really great to see how many people tuned in to watching the computer dry. Okay, well, you know, here we are. We're still streaming. This is going to be a riveting YouTube video when it goes up. So why don't we do something fun? What should we do? I mean, this is fun, but like, uh... Maybe we can do something especially weird. Oh, okay, I have a question. Does anybody know... On norms... Is it possible to have a script talk to the internet? Like, can I just query a website with, like, the normal Lua code you would use to query a website? Ye, essi, ak. I believe that's a yes. Um... Geodrhythms, oh my god. I don't, it does this, I don't even know if this Just Friends has the current firmware, and that laptop is the thing I always flash the firmwares with. And I'm definitely not game to bring another laptop over here. I guess I should drink the last of this evil glass of water. Show bit. Um, 
can run an arbitrary shell command. Yo, if I can run an arbitrary shell command, can't I just clone a git repo from inside of Lua? Like, from, from in Maiden? How do I, like, I just do, like, OS, OS execute or something like that? <sighs> yeah, okay, I'm, I'm trying to type here. But, my keyboard has gone. It also got very wet. It's wet. <laughs> um, another keyboard. I have one over here. is the keyboard. I think it's this one. What a day. Geode rhythms. Wait, we can do that, I guess. We can do something. Look, let's you tell OS underscore capture. Thank you. Synthet. kind of a nice little keyboard setup. Find OS. Nope. Oh, but this keyboard has a different layout than the one I was just using. Like the control keys and the Windows key are all in different places. It's like the world's just trying to taunt me today. Did that turn off? Oh no, we're still good. Mm. Somehow I just want to do, this to me seems like a hilarious thing that we can do. That's the second half of the screen. <laughs> um, and I'm going to close this PowerShell because clearly we're not going to use that. Which means I can remove it from here. Disappear. Fully turn into making a new album. I know, I know, I need to make more music. I've been making music. Um, I was going to say I'd play you something I recorded, but I could just... Um, I could just set up the other modular case. It's right here. You know what's really cool? If you, um, oh, check this out. Let's do this. Wow. Twitch is so weird sometimes. I don't really want to make that disappear. I just want to like do this. Nope, nope. Can I resize? I guess not. Temporary. Temporary secretary. Does anybody here like Paul McCartney? I'm not a huge fan. I shouldn't hold this because it'll not work, but you can, if you molt, 
I, what am I even trying to do this for? If you molt uh, multiple devices, like multiple Just Friends together, um, you can flash their firmware at the same time. How about that? But that's not what you want to do. We just want to reboot this thing. That's dumb. Also, nobody made fun of my George Michael joke on the Crow two, the Crow version two announcement, and I was disappointed. I mean, come on, what an opportunity! If you didn't get it, go and find it. You'll see it. It's very, it's very obvious and not incredible, not entirely funny. I think this was the whole patch. It's two patch cables. Um, is this making sound? No. No, it looks like it should be. Yeah. Please don't make fun of me for bringing the third computer into this equation. <laughs>
Ryan's around. This is what I'm gonna send in one of these schools. That's really good.
Thanks for coming.